Hi everyone! Welcome back to 21st Century Literature Subject. Last time we talked about the history of Philippine literature. This time we'll not be moving with our next topic, but still under lesson one. So, for our today's topic, we do have the dimensions of Philippine literary history. So, these are the topics that we're going to discuss as we go on with the presentation. First, importance of knowing the Philippine literary history. Second, the dimensions of Philippine literary history. The third one is about the examples of Philippine literary history. And the last one, which is about the importance of knowing the dimensions. So, let's now proceed. So, for the importance of knowing the Philippine literary history are the following. The first one is, we try to learn about origins, one's origin, and how past events work to shape um, different cultures. Since uh, last time, we talked about how the Philippine literature evolves through time, we try to look into the origin of everything from the pre-colonial going to the contemporary period and also um, we understand how situation or uh, scenes or events interconnected with each other another one is it improves your reading skills and enhance your knowledge through philippine literature you try to look into and try to improve your reading skills and also try to improve your appreciation of reading and improve also your reading fluency. Another one is it encourages uh, uh, you to think critically. Critically in terms of not just answering the WH questions but thinking beyond what is in the text. Another one is learning about persons, uh, lives, struggles, stories, and message and behind. So behind the message of it. So the purpose and importance of Philippine uh, literary history is that you try to understand what they feel and also you try to understand the situation and events happened way back then. Okay? And also you understand what is the message behind their uh, behind their literary poems or literary works okay so next one also is about through philippine literary history we try to understand and know our own school uh, our own culture so our own culture in a way that you look into the different regions you look into the different styles and you look also into the different contexts where the author is coming from Another one is we try to reflect on the events happened in the past. Another one also is we travel to different places through our imagination when we are reading these literary works. And another one is, and which is the most important thing of all, is about we try to put pride on the literary works of our Filipino writers, not only that, but also the richness of the culture of the Philippines. So let's now proceed. So another topic that we're going to be dealing with is the dimensions of Philippine literary history. So here, we do have the geographical, the language, and the ethnicity. Geographical, language, and ethnicity are into the literary forms are into the literary works and also are into the Philippine literary history. So let's now proceed. What do you mean by geography? Geography is basically the study of places and the relationships between people and their environment. So in short, geography answers the question, where? Where did the story happen? Okay? For the next one is about language. Language is basically the language itself. The, com the communication tool that we use. So a system of conventional spoken, manual, or written symbols by which individuals express themselves. What language did they use particularly in that uh, event or in that time? So what are the terms present in the passage, uh, passage that represent the community? 
are they using the language of Mindoro? Or are they use, uh, using the language of Visaya? Or are they using the language of way back the pre-colonial period? So something like that. So another one is about ethnicity. Ethnicity is uh, more of a depiction of the culture itself. So a notion that refers to social entities sharing real or putative inscriptive features like a common origin or cultural linguistic legacy which is simply command, a special collective commitment as well as their retention and tra transmission. And since it, uh, it talks about culture and it talks also about the inscriptive features like the origin of it, so the question that should be in line with ethnicity is the following. Uh, is what are the cultures and traditions present into the time of an ethnic group that were being portrayed in the story? So this one, the geographic, language, ethnicity are all present into the literary works. It can be a story, it can be a poem, or any other literary forms. So let's have proceed. So this is an example of geographic, linguistic, and ethnic dimensions. So we do have here for, I think this example is based on Indrapatra and, and Suleiman. Indrapatra and Suleiman is an epic story which talks about uh, these two heroes fighting for monsters like uh, Tarabusa, Opa, and the rest, Kurita, and like that. So here, the geographic dimension of the story in Darapatra and Suleiman is this one. Mindanao, Kahrian ng Mantapuli, Kabilalan, Matutum, Bita, and Gurayu. So specifically, the setting of the story. While the other one, what language is present into the story? What uh, evidences shows that they try to use a different kind of language? So here, we do have the names of Indarapatra and Sulaiman are distinct in Mindanao. And the other one, which is about the names of the enemies, Purita, Tarabusao, Pa, are distinctive too. And the weapons, Grace Espada and Juris Pakal. So, as what I've told you, these are the terms in the passage that represent the community. Well, for the ethnic dimension, this talks about what is the culture surrounding into the story. So here, family members rule over kingdoms by blood. Men rulers being very brave and good in fighting. The use of grace, espada, juris, pakal in fighting. Belief in symbols such as the death of a certain plant that represents someone is also the death of that person. Birds and other creatures are their enemies. Belief in a miraculous water that can bring back life. And king letting their daughter to be married to another king or someone with high position as a gift or gratitude. So here, this is the way of the culture of, uh, of uh, this story way back then. Okay? So that's the example of geographic, linguistic, and ethnic. So let's now proceed. So what is the importance of knowing the dimensions? First, when you try to understand and identify the different dimensions of the story itself or the timeline itself or the events that happen in the story um, is first you try to understand the context. You try to understand the situation happening in the story. It's easy for you to put yourself into the story because you understand where the situation is coming from. Another one is you learn about the origin. You learn about the interconnectivity of the characters, the events, and the situation. Another one also is you can imagine what is happening into the story. You make more vivid description. You make more clear description of what is happening in the story. So I think that would be all for the lesson of various uh, dimensions of uh, Philippine literary history. So I think for this lesson, this is the last lesson of uh, lesson one. 
So be ready for the uh, submission of your activities for this week. So I hope you are all safe. We will uh, save the uh, other lessons for uh, my next uh, few uh, next presentations. So I hope you are safe and have a nice day, everyone.